Welcome to the second video on Git. In this one, I'm going to talk about how we can remove the .pyc files from our not only local repository, but also our remote repository. So in other words, the code base that we're working on, if that has any .pyc files lying around that we don't want in our repository, which normally we don't really want .pyc files, especially in our remote repository, because it means other people are going to pull them down and .pyc files, uh, we don't need them because they're not really readable by humans. So they just get in the way. So the best thing to do is just get them out of that repository, just delete them. So I'm going to do that and that's sort of a, a three-step process. So the first thing I want to do is remove them locally, so make the change to the local repository on my computer. Then what I want to do is make a commit, so making that change uh, locally and making sure that Git is aware of that change and has uh, sort of committed to remembering it, if you like, uh, you know, our code base in, in a specific point in time. Uh, I like that's, that's how I like to think of commit. And then what I want to do finally is push it to the remote repository so that our changes can be reflected in that remote repository. So first, to do that first thing, to remove all the PYC files, what I like to do is I use a, a find command, which is uh, can be kind of complicated, but I'm going to I'm going to try and explain it bit by bit because I think it's a really useful and powerful command for you to be able to know, and uh, you'll probably use it a lot in the future uh, when you get the hang of how how it works. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to get status, just so you can see the current status of sort of where I'm at. Now I have a few PYC files and. Uh, these are the ones that I've modified, but I also have a lot just lying around in my repository. So to do that, I'm, I'm just going to list them out just to see what I've got. So what I can do is I can do find dot. So dot in Unix is sort of the current directory. So that's referring to this tutorial folder, which is the root directory uh, within which all my source code for the project is stored. What this is saying is find anything which is in this uh, uh, the folder and search recursively for anything in subfolders within that folder as well. So it's a recursive search. And what I can do now is I can specify, okay, well, what, what is it actually looking for? So the name of what it's looking for, so the name of the files, in other words, is going to be star.pyc. So, in other words, all the PYC files. If you're just looking for one, then you could just put an, an explicit name there of the particular file or uh, path and file name that you wanted to uh, delete if it was sort of in subdirectories as well. But in this case, we just want, want to get all the uh, PYC files. Now, what you can then do uh, is, because this won't really do much on its own, we, we have to tell it what we want to do. So, just to show you all the PYC files, I'm going to do dash print. So, if we do that, we can see all the uh, .pyc files that are currently within that folder in some sense. So, you can see, in fact, I have all the PYC files in some subdirectory of that current project uh, directory, that, that root level project directory. Uh, so, this tutorial folder which, with it, which I'm in right now. So listing that out, you can see all the ones that I want to get rid of, and there are quite a few because, you know, with Django you end up working with quite a lot of files and it gets a bit messy, so I just want to get rid of it all. So to do that, it's quite easy now because I just use that same command to get those same PYC files, but instead of printing out their, you know, file names, I'm just going to do delete instead. So that's just deleted all the PYC files really quick and really easy. Uh, you know, once you've got that command sort of in your head. And what I'm, gonna, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna do a git status, just to show me the current state of the repository, see what I've changed. I like to do that really every time I've changed change something, if I'm thinking about making a commit, uh, just so that I know what I'm changing, and if there's anything which I think, oh hang on, this doesn't look quite right, maybe it's, um, maybe it shouldn't really be there, then I can sort of fix it before I go ahead and make that commit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add all these .pyc files. So git add, and then I'm just gonna commit everything, and I don't really mind about the database being there because I can sort that out another time. But what I want to do is just add all the files. I could do dash a or I could also do dot. They do pretty much the same thing. And now if I do git status again, it'll all be green because we've just staged all those files ready for commit. So I'm just trying to use the terminology so that you get used to it if you're not familiar with it already. But what I can do now is I can do git commit uh, dash m and I can say removed 
uh, .pyc files. So if we hit enter on that, that's actually made the commit now uh, in our local repository and you can see all the things that we've deleted. If I do git log now, so a log is sort of like a history of all the commits that you've made and you can see that I've uh, made the initial commit which is in the first git video and then I made a commit adding the profile picture uh, which is something I did sort of a little bit later on but not uh, uh, not on video, so I just I just did that after one of the Django tutorial videos where I made a change and then I committed it, and then that latest one which you just saw me make uh, removed .pyc files. So now that we've got that, we have uh, one commit here, or I think maybe two commits uh, that aren't on uh, the remote repository. So what I can do is I can actually do uh, git push, and then that's going to push the commits. Uh, to that repository, assuming nothing's changed on the remote. So the reason this was rejected, and yours probably won't be, so yours is probably going to work at this point if you just do git push. Uh, what you could do is git push origin master if you have multiple branches or multiple remotes. Uh, if you don't know what that means, then git push is probably just going to work fine for you. Um, so if you want to find the remotes, you could do git remote, remote, and mine, mine is just origin because that's what we set it and uh, git branch will show you the branch that you're on so you're just on master so if you do git push uh, git push origin master then that can sometimes work if git push doesn't work but usually when uh, git push is an issue and git push origin master will work uh, it's actually going to tell you and git is usually really helpful about saying oh hang on did you actually mean to do git push origin master rather than git push and it will su suggest that and you know walk you through the process if you read that message but in this case what actually happened was I had a commit on the remote uh, because I tried to make this commit before uh, so what I'm just going to do is I'm actually going to force uh, this code onto uh, the remote server so you can do dash f or dash dash force so if you made a commit uh, on the remote and then got rid of it locally and then you're trying to make that commit again uh, ignoring all the remote changes you can do forceful push which is going to say ignoring all the changes on the remote just push it whatever happens uh, just ignoring the remote changes now this is very dangerous if you have uh, you know one branch like I do which is the master branch with all the source code and it's really not very recommended but uh, I just basically screwed up a last commit trying to uh, film video without actually recording which is annoying but uh, now what I can do is uh, just forcefully push so get rid of everything on the remote and just replace it with everything that was on my local master branch which in this case is fine because I know what you know how how it works and and you know I know that the code is going to work so I'm not really breaking anything but in the future I am going to talk about branching and how you can do that much more safely uh, using multiple develop branches and things like that. In the next one we're actually going to talk about the git ignore file and how you can use it to be able to uh, ignore the .pyc files so that git doesn't accidentally add them uh, to one of your commits later down the line. Uh, you know, when you create these PYC files again, uh, we, won't, we won't get to just sort of ignore them uh, forever now into the future, which won't currently happen. So at the moment, uh, it will just keep recreating the .pyc files every time you run a server and, you know, flick through your pages, you're using your Django app, it'll create those PYC files for all those Django files again. You have to delete them and then push them, which is just not something you want to do, and the git ignore file uh, can solve that.